This video is on polynomial functions. And when we talk about polynomials, where we're headed with it is just the idea that uh, we have usually a variable of x or whatever it happens to be, and it probably has some sort of uh, multiple term situation. So we'll have maybe something with 4x to the fourth, and then maybe we'll have uh, you know 3x to the sixth even. Uh, we could have something, a, a monomial or a single component could be as small as maybe I had 2, that's a constant, or 3x. Let's just put some signs in front of these and talk about standard form for a second. When we talk about standard form, we like to have everything organized in a way where we can make comparisons between them. A standard form, essentially, in far, as far as polynomials goes, represents the idea that um, exponents on the variables descend, which is to say they go down over time. So what I want is to find the uh, term that has the highest exponent on the variable, so in this case x to the sixth, and I'm going to put that one first. So for this one I would make it negative 3x to the sixth. I'm going to turn this into green, I don't know why that didn't work. Um, and then I would just make sure that I find the next smallest one, or the next one down, next largest one I guess, which would be 4x to the fourth, so plus 4x to the fourth. Uh, and then I'm going to deal with plus 3x, because it's next, and then minus 2, because really, the variable here would be x to the 0 power, anything that's a constant, because x to 0 power is just times 1. So that's the thing you want to put last. Standard form, have the nice exponents going down, descending fashion, kind of like those little uh, Russian dolls that hide inside each other. Now, when I say the word degree, what I'm talking about is the largest, um, the term that has the largest exponent on the variable. So uh, if I have 15 terms, the maybe the largest one is x to the eighth. The degree of that polynomial is x to the eighth. And we can name them or organize them in such a way that uh, it makes it easy to classify them, which is really sort of to name them. Um, for instance, if I have uh, zero degrees, so maybe I have just a number, like the number five, I generally refer to that idea as being a constant function because it's going to draw like a nice solid line. If I have a x to the first power scenario, and that's the largest one that's there, I'm going to say it's linear. If I have x squared involved, I'm going to start looking at that as a quadratic. If I have x to the third and some other stuff, dot, 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 plus minus, as long as x to the third is the most, I'm going to say that it's cubic. If I have x to the, sorry about that, x to the fourth plus x squared minus one, or whatever it happens to be, I'm going to go ahead and refer to that as a quartic. And then finally, if I have x to the fifth, I'm going to consider that to be kintic. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, at some point it ends up being that they refer to things as like degree of and the number. There's no uh, prefix after a certain point. Usually around five they stop using a prefix, but occasionally people will throw uh, some other things in there just for uh, whatever it happens to be. A polynomial can also be defined not only by uh, its degree, I should say, but also by its number of terms, like how many parts there are. If I have uh, 4x squared, there's only one term, no matter, uh, despite the fact that, you know, there's, it only has one component to it. So I'm going to refer to that as a monomial. So it's almost like first name, last name. I would say it's a first name and then last name relationship. If there's two parts, so say um, 4x minus 9, then I'm dealing with a binomial. If I have uh, three parts, I'll use one of the ones from the other side. I'll say this is a trinomial. And then I start getting into uh, four. I'm looking at uh, polynomial 
of four terms. And it tends to break upwards from there of five terms, of six terms, of seven terms. We don't tend to in, uh, continue making up prefixes for them. They're just not very well, uh, well done at that point. So that's classifying them. So let's use it to practice a little bit. Uh, so in these, we're going to put them in standard form. And then from there, we can go ahead and um, classify them based on what they are. So I noticed that this is the first term here. Yeah, flip over to blue pen. Uh, this is my largest term. This is x to the first power. This would be x to the zero if I so desired. So to write it in standard form, I would need to write the x squared term first, keeping the uh, sign with it, plus 5x minus 7. Now, the degree of this one, so degree of the polynomial is the t 2 there because that's the largest. x squared is the largest. And the uh, number of terms is, of course, 3. So taking what I had before and putting it together, that would mean I would end up with a quadratic trinomial. So that's that. Um, let's look at the next one. Once again, I want to take a look at them in terms of what their um, degree have, what's the largest degree, and that would be right here, x to the fourth power. So I'm going to put that one first, 6x to the fourth. If this was a minus 6x to the fourth, I'd put a negative in front, just FYI. You'll notice that there are like terms. We do need to combine those to get them in full on standard form. So 4 minus 3 gives me 1, so plus 1 x to the third. Uh, x to the second power would come next, minus negative 2x squared. There is no uh, x term, or x to the first power, so I just don't have to write that. And then plus 16 tags on to the end. Now, from a degree perspective, I could say that the degree is a fourth degree, and number of terms. I would say that we have one, two, three, four terms. So the gigantic name that sort of tags itself onto the end of this behemoth is we're dealing with a quartic polynomial. of four terms. So that's naming them and classifying them.